So this one's about the pigeonhole principle. Uh, it is a really great mathematical concept, a very easy to understand concept, but it uh, allows you to do some surprising mathematics that you might not have, have considered being able to do before. So the, the formal definition of the pigeonhole principle is if n plus one or more objects are placed into n holes, then some holes contain at least two objects. That is as straightforward as it gets. So uh, let's make some holes. One hole, two holes, three holes, four holes. Now let's make some pigeons. All right, my pigeons are flying. I've got five pigeons. Now if the pigeons all get put into a hole, one of the holes will have two pigeons in it. Whoa, amazing. All right, let's do some um, questions with the pigeonhole principle. You have 13 red, 10 blue, and eight green socks. How many socks need to be selected at random to ensure that you have a matching pair? So let's imagine that uh, you wake up, but it's still dark, and you're running out the door. You don't have time to put your socks on. You don't even have time to turn the light on, but you reach into the sock drawer, and you grab how many socks to make sure that when you're getting dressed in the car, you have a matching pair. So um, it's surprising because there's a lot of socks there. There's 13, 10, 8, there's 18 plus 13, there's 31 pairs of, there's 31 socks. Um, but you only need to grab four. Um, so there's a box, there's a box, there's a box. And let's imagine that you're in the car and you're, you've got those three boxes because there's red, blue, and green, and you've got a sock, a sock, sock, a sock, uh, green, red, blue. You throw one in there. Oh, that one was green. You throw another sock in there. Oh, that one was red. You throw another sock in there. Oh, that one was blue. The fourth sock has to be green, red, or blue, because those were the only other options. So once you throw that fourth sock into one of those places, boom, matching pair. So the answer there is four socks. Just take four socks with you. Mathematics doesn't have some fancy notation for it, so we really need to talk in words. So you need to give your explanation. Label three holes, red, blue, and green. Select four socks and play cheat. place each sock into a hole. As there are four socks and three holes, the pigeonhole principle guarantees that some hole contains at least two socks. Um, that's that's my solution. That's what I would write in the exam if I was given this question. Um, important to note, perhaps, that I've said that there, you know, there was a green, there was a red, there was a blue, there was a red. There is another option here. There could have been uh, three green socks and one red sock. So the pigeonhole principle doesn't tell you exactly what socks you've got in your hand. It's just um, it just guarantees that you have at least one pair. This one's really surprising. I love this question. Show that for any five points chosen inside a two by two square, at least two of them will be no more than root two units apart. So let's draw our square first of all. Square. And we're going to place five points in it at random. Uh, I'll, I'll just do it now. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I put them all really, really close together. Um, now, we know that the um, size of the box is two by two, uh, and it doesn't look like they're less, sorry, more than you, root two units apart. They're very close together. They're probably less than one unit apart. So maybe I should um, try to spread them out a bit. Put one there, put one there, put one there, put one there, put one there. Um, maybe they're root two units apart. Well, I don't know. How can I prove? How can I prove that uh, at least two of them will be no more than root two units apart? Okay, so there's five dots. If there's five dots and we're going to use the pigeonhole principle, maybe we should just have four boxes. And I'm going to create my four boxes by cutting this box into four equal boxes. Each of those boxes is um, one by one. Now, I'm going to just place a dot in each of those boxes. One, two, three, four. 
but it says I have to place five points, which means, and this is the important part, one of the dots, one of the boxes has to have two dots. Classic pigeonhole principle. Now, let's say that um, even inside of that box, how far apart could those two dots be? Well, the absolute limit would be if the two dots were here and here on the furthest corners. And um, Pythagoras' theorem says that the distance between, I'll call that dot A and that dot B, um, the distance between dot A and dot B would be um, 1 squared plus 1 squared root 1, um, which is the square root of 2. So the absolute limit that those two dots could be is root 2, which is what we're trying to show with our question here. Now, obviously, we're going to have to write some words here to explain what we've just done. Okay, so there's my little blurb, the little thing that I would write in an exam. Split the square into four unit squares, one by one squares. Now we have four squares and five points. By the pigeonhole principle, some square must contain two points. The distance between the two points in one square cannot exceed the diagonal of the square, which is mathematics done. Um, okay, so let's just do that. this one last part B before we're done. Seven football teams play 22 games of football show that some pair of teams play each other at least twice. All right, so there's seven teams, seven people, whatever it is, and they're, they're playing playing games against each other, playing games of football. They're shaking hands, essentially. How many different ways can we combine those teams? Well, the different ways that we can combine those teams into groups of two is seven choose two which is 21. All right, we're in pigeonhole business now because we've got 21 different ways to combine those seven football teams, but they need to play 22 games of football. So that means that there's 21 boxes, but 22 games of football to fit into those boxes, which means that one of those boxes has to contain a, a double up, um, which is where we get our... Uh, pair of teams playing each other at least twice. A little blurb there. Now it's important to note, I will note again, at least twice. Because while the pigeonhole principle tells you that there must have been a double up, it doesn't tell you how many double ups there actually were. Because there might be some teams that didn't play each other at all, and some teams that all play each other twice. Maybe these teams were split into like two pools, three in this team, three in this pool, and seven in this pool. And these teams played each other five times each, and these teams played each other five times each, whatever it is. So the pigeonhole principle doesn't tell you exactly what happened. It just tells you what, uh, it just puts limits on what actually happened. So um, the generalized pigeonhole principle. Uh, if at least m times n plus one objects are placed into n holes, then some hole contains at least m plus 1 objects. Now we're not saying exactly, we're saying at least. So there's that thing again. Uh, suppose that 13 pigeons are placed into four holes. So you know for certain, so if you were to, the, the best case scenario would be to take your 13 pigeons and go hole A, hole B, hole C, hole D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Um, you would have done it three times and then had an extra pigeon which means that you would have uh, four at least four pigeons in one of the holes. So in that particular case, the uh, n holes, there were four holes, and we had three times four, so m is three. We had three times four plus one pigeons. We had 13 pigeons. Uh, then some hole contains at least m plus one, uh, contains at least three plus one contains at least four pigeons. Okay, there's our, there's our basic idea. Uh, let's do a couple of questions that might use something like that. Okay, 16 natural numbers, the counting numbers are written on a whiteboard. Prove that at least four numbers will leave the same remainder when divided by five. Okay, when a number is divided by five, it could leave the following remainders. Zero, one, two, three, or four. So there are five different things that can happen. There are five boxes 
One, two, three, four, five. There are five boxes that we can place each of our 16 natural numbers into. Remainder zero, remainder one, remainder two, remainder three, or remainder four. Now, if we were to do that, what would happen? Well, uh, let's see. Boom, 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 that's five. Boom, 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 that's 10. Boom, 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 that's 15. And one more has to go in. That means that there's going to be at least four numbers in one of those. Now, that's not a formal proof. Obviously, we need to do a little bit more than that. All right, so we have five holes. I'll just write it down here, five holes. Um, now, if at least mn plus one object. So in this case, it's three times five plus one equals 16. So because there's three times five, I'll just write because. Three times five by one. I'll just use my typing now. By the pigeonhole principle, there will be three plus one uh, numbers in, or I'll say sharing uh, remainder equals four. There, prove done. Next one, seven people sit at a round table with 10 chairs, show that there are three consecutive chairs that are occupied. Round table with 10 chairs, and you might be looking at those chairs thinking, okay, each of those chairs is a whole, but actually we need to think a little more, more deeply about it. Show that there are three consecutive chairs that are occupied. All right, I'm just gonna number all of these chairs. How many groups of three consecutive chairs are there? Well, there's a group of three consecutive, one, two, three. There's a two, three, four. There's a three, four, five, four, five, six, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, eight, nine, ten, nine, ten, one, and ten, one, two. There are ten um, consecutive, uh, ten lots of three consecutive chairs. Ten lots. All right, and there are seven people. Person, and let's put them in uh, seat number one. Okay, now, which of these holes, there's 10 holes, these are my holes, which, which of these holes is that pigeon being put into? One, one, one. Wait a minute. So wait, I'm putting a pigeon into three different holes. Yes, in this case. And so this is a, a concept of putting pigeons into multiple holes. And so each of our pigeons, remember we have seven people, so we have seven pigeons here. Each of our seven pigeons needs to go into three of these holes. So in essence, I kind of have 21 pigeons. Um, so I have 21 pigeons and I have 10 holes. Each pigeon goes into three holes. Therefore, 21 pigeons, seven times three. Oh, let's do seven. Therefore, seven times three equals 21. 21 pigeons need to be allocated to 10 holes. Therefore, and we can do our little formula again, or we can do since, since 21 equals, equals, Oops, why is it doing that? Equals two times 10 plus one. This means that one hole must contain three pigeons. All right, so that means that one of these holes will definitely contain three pigeons. It doesn't matter how you try to split it. That's the pigeonhole principle. I know it sounds like a really simple idea, but it will trick you up again and again and again. It's something you really do have to sort of practice and think about and puzzle over. It's also a little bit difficult to um, communicate, use your words.